And welcome back, George Nori with Michelle Claire. Michelle, how does one enhance their psychic abilities? How do they make it better? Yeah, well, there's there are some easy ways to do that. Start by practicing and playing with it. So you can practice while you're driving. You can say, okay, the car in front of me, I feel like at the next light they're turning right. So start practicing with little things. People can use a deck of cards and say the next card's red, black, or as you get better, this is a, a heart, this is a spade. You start predicting what's coming up. I also tell people, write it down because what you want is you want to be able to say, I got it right, I got it right, I got it right. And you'll really start trusting yourself, your gut, and what's coming next. Is it done within the brain or outside of the brain? I think it's done outside of the brain. I think it's a soul level process. We use our brain to interpret the information that's coming in, but just like a past life regression, when somebody has a past life regression and remembers another life, that was actually never stored in the brain that they're using right now. That's a soul, a soul memory that is coming in and being interpreted through the brain. You mentioned how you have the ability to turn it on and turn it off. Not a lot of psychics have that ability. How did you train yourself to do that? Well, I really use this radio analogy, and so I would say, okay, if I'm, if I'm getting ready to go into work, I'm turning my volume full up. When I want to connect with the angels in my mind, I'm going to channel 111. I need to connect to Grandma channel 103. So I guide, direct, and target it. And I, I, like I said, it's never completely off, but I will turn the volume up or down depending on the situation. And so also with this, spirit world will honor our rules, regulations, and parameters. I literally never get woken up in the middle of the night by a spirit because this is part of my rules. Hey, I need to get my sleep. If you want me to work for you tomorrow, don't wake me up. That's right. You're still a human. Yes. Absolutely. You ready for some calls? Yes, let's do it. Let's start with uh, Scott in Florida, first-time caller. Welcome to the show. Hey, Scotty. Hey, George. How are you, Uh, Michelle? Great show tonight. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller, back from the Air Bell base. Growing to love you, George, over the years. Thank you. Uh, I I wanted to ask about my two angels. Um, When I was a child, I had a vivid dream. An angel that was taller and one that was shorter. And I was on like a balcony overlooking what was to be my life. And it was uh, to be very exciting. And uh, I actually, for lack of a better explanation, they let me go down and experience it. And it was, for lack of a better explanation, it was like a child playing with toys. And uh, next thing I know, uh, I'm in my life, and I just wondered what you might be able to tell me. It was kind of like a cobalt blue room, and the angels were uh, kind of grayish, bluish, one hollow, one blue. All right. Do you see any angels around him? Uh, you know, I absolutely do. I feel three, so I feel a third one coming in. So three. I'm not sure what you're getting ready to embark on next year, but I want to tell you I feel an angel getting ready to step onto your team to start with that. So there's something new and big coming in for you next year. It feels really good, but it's a little bit out of your comfort zone or something new that you haven't done yet. Now, what I love about what you said was how you got to kind of go play in your life before you actually started your life or this energy that you're giving me. This is something that I've just recently been introduced from by spirit. And what they have told me is that we actually have the ability as a soul to kind of run our life in simulation mode before we actually incarnate and come in. And so this is what I feel like this was for you. This was your chance to kind of have that simulation, tap into it a little bit more, make sure it felt comfortable, know that you're supported on this journey, and then really be able to step into it. So I I am curious, are you planning a new endeavor for 2024? I actually, uh, Michelle, there is something on the on the back burner that I've been planning to do. It's not new for me. Mm -hmm. It'll be new for me to do here in Florida. Okay. So listen, here's the energy for you with that. You have this third strong angel coming in to help you launch this. 
next year is your year to do this. Next year, it, every, they're showing me everything is primed and ready. So it's okay. You, I feel like by March is where you're really going to be like, yeah, I think it's time. I think I'm ready. Let's put down some groundwork here. I can feel that coming in for you. Please know you're supported in this, and next year is really the year for you to do it. What do angels want from us, Michelle? You know, they don't actually want anything from us except for us to ask them for help and guidance and support along the way. They are truly here to serve us. They get to be familiar with the human experience as they watch what we go through. So they're learning and growing too. But at the same time, they've truly signed up to serve us on our life path. It's interesting that they do that. Mm -hmm. What's their motivation? Well, because it helps them to grow, learn, and evolve too. So one of the things that this actually came from Mother Teresa when I was reading for a client. Uh, She was an RN. Her mom was in hospice. She had eight kids. She was working full time, and she was completely mentally, emotionally, physically depleted. And Mother Teresa came in during her reading, and I was a little surprised. I said, I have Mother Teresa here. She said, well, yes, I worked with her in Calcutta. And I was like, wow, well, this is is amazing. Mother Teresa said to this beautiful lady, she said, said, I never lost myself in service to others. If I had, I wouldn't have been able to serve, right? So by her serving herself and taking care of herself, she was able to help others. Here's what our angels are always reminding us. We need to take care of ourselves. Self-care is important. And by doing that, we serve others. So for you, George, your soul said, hey, I'm going to be in broadcast. I'm going to create a new space. I'm going to enjoy this. And by you serving your soul's purpose, look at the millions and billions of people whose lives you touch by you serving your soul's calling. It's imperative that we learn to do this. Next up, let's go to Mike in St. Louis on the wild card line. Michael, I hear it's going to be very hot out there. Yes, it has been. They just put a heat warning out in uh, my area. And thank you so much for taking my call, uh, uh, George. Thank you. And, uh, Hi, and Mike. Thank you, Michelle. Hi. How are you? Um, a couple of things. Um, I have a son that passed. I want to see what you may feel that uh, what he feels right now. And then also his mother that I'd lost um, February 14th, some years back. Um, and just, uh, lastly, if you could, if you can't, then time, I understand if, uh, you could give me, um, a reading of myself and, um, will I reach some harmony in my life and in my future? But, um, my son and my ex-wife, I'd like to know initially. Yeah. So I feel your son come in first. He's fun. He shows me like, he shows me motorcycles, fast motorcycles, fast energy, hot, fast, fun, vibrant. So you need to look for him. He says where he is, which is present with you now. So I know that you are looking for signs. He's giving me the number one around you. I don't know if he's your first, oldest, only son, but there's a number one, or you're going to see 111, 1111, ones in connection with him. Okay. He puts his hand on your right shoulder. So there's a couple of things about that. One, I feel like he's putting healing energy on your right shoulder. I don't know if you have any stiffness or problem with the right shoulder, but I want to talk about his hand specifically being there as he's guiding you through this. He says to you, dad, you have not stopped parenting me. So keep up this conversation that you're having with him because I know you're talking to him regularly, but please know that you are both still learning and growing together on this journey. Okay, that's really the big thing with your son. He also shows me lots of pennies. So I think he throws pennies your way. So you should be finding them in the parking lot, under the couch, all over the place. Lots of pennies for you. And I believe in a lot about numbers and the 1 and 11 are so ironic. And the shoulder, I just had surgery. So that's on that. So do you feel anything about his mother, who I lost also, about what she might be feeling? I do. So with her, I want to talk about music because I feel like she had a love of music and she sends you a lot of songs, a lot of notes. I actually feel like you could be in the grocery store and hear a song playing that isn't actually playing, but it's her sending you this message. She says, thank you, thank you, thank you. She knows you tried so 
card. So whatever this is about your love, your support, your guidance, your caretaking for her, she, she has a huge heart full of love for you. She wants you to know this did not change with her transition. She still has this deep love for you and appreciation for all of the help that you gave her. With her, she's showing me a yellow butterfly, so I want to say look for yellow butterflies also, as well as the music. And uh, if you can give Mike a quick reading about himself. Yeah, Mike, hang in there. I know that there are, like, the way that Spirit's showing me your life, it, it feels a little bit like a roller coaster right now. But 2024, things are getting ready to smooth out for you. I can feel that. There is, a, like, an emotional stability, a mental stability. I feel like you're starting to catch your stride again. You're starting, I actually feel like you're going to say, I, I, this is the most I've felt like myself in years. So, so and it's not going to start on January 1st. It's going to start before that. But you're getting ready to step back back into who you are now, not who you were, but who you are now. And there's a lot of, of good opportunities. I want to say there's a, they're showing me a social network. So I feel like you're going to be reaching out, making more friends, meeting new people. Super. Thanks, Mike. Next up, let's go to Elisa in Portland, Oregon. Hello, Elisa. Welcome back. Hi, George. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just sort of wanting to get just a general reading about myself. If you could tell me um, any messages, uh, particularly from Harley and you know, my angels, how many angels I have. Okay. Um, so I, I do want to go with your angels because they just came in really quick as soon as I heard your name. I'm getting the number four around you. So I actually think you probably also see like repeating fours, four, 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 or you pull up to – an address, it's 44 or something. There's a lot of fours in, in your energy field right now. I actually do not know numerology, but I would tell you, please Google the number four and see what it represents. This is important for you as you're stepping into this next year. They're telling me to tell you, don't give up. So I feel tiredness in your energy. I feel, oh, you know, this has been a long road. They're not giving me all the details about this, but they're telling me not to tell you clearly, do not give up. You're right on the the verge of turning the corner right now. Um, with this, they know that you're asking them for help and guidance, and specifically the word clarity is coming in. So please know that they are absolutely giving you clarity. This is a little bit, they want me to say, you, uh, you do have clarity, but you're learning to trust yourself again. So sometimes you know what you know, but you're not, you're not trusting yourself. So a really big message for you tonight is to say, I know what I know and start owning that, because I feel like the clarity is there for you. What is the maximum number of angels that could uh, surround somebody? You know, I, the most I've seen around someone is eight, but I don't believe there is a maximum number. I think there are probably people with more than eight. Wow. And the minimum, does everybody have at least one? At least one. Assigned to us? Forever, for our whole lifetime here on Earth, yes. The, do our angels like us? No, they love us infinitely. You scared me for a moment. <laughs> I know, I wanted to. Next up, let's go to, whose turn is it? It is Stephanie in San Pedro, California, west of the Rockies. Let's get her in before the break. Hi, Steph. Hi, how are you? Great. How about yourself? Excellent. Thanks for taking my call, George. Sure thing. Go ahead. Um, I've lived in my grandpa's house since last July, um, it was the house the first four years I, after I was born that I lived in, and I've seen many spirits in here. I've had a priest come in and do a blessing with holy water and different things. I've saged, and I just don't quite feel comfortable here. Um, my parents are giving me and my husband this house, ultimately, and I just don't feel like it's mine. I feel like there's a lot of people here, you know, other than me and my husband and my cat. And it's, I, I just need need to know what I need to do, Michelle, because okay, I so seriously am stressed out about living in this house. Well, let me just tell you what I'm feeling. It is sitting on some type of vortex or energy um, that is attracting a lot of spirits. So what you're, you're having there isn't just like, you know, grandpa or people who are connected to that house, but it gives me a passing through energy. So I feel like there's a lot of spiritual energy passing through. Um, if you are completely uncomfortable, I'm going to be real honest. Go move. Go somewhere where you're happy. Sell that house, think, right? 
Yeah, sell the house. One thing that I think people don't do enough, when I clear houses, I clear them on all levels and all dimensions for all of time. So sometimes we come in and it's like putting frosting on a cake, but we don't know what all is in the cake. We just kind of frost it a little bit. That's one of the things you could do with your sage or if you have someone in your area that blesses houses, have them actually come in and work on it in multiple levels and see what it feels like to you then. Otherwise, if you're still uncomfortable, listen, you need to move. You need to enjoy your life. Okay. Good luck, Steph. Guy, thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Now, you have to, some cities, some markets, you have to disclose if a house is haunted. You know that. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. It depends on the state law, but uh, there are some states where you must disclose whether a house might be haunted or not, which is, that's scary all by itself. That is. (laughs) Would you buy a haunted house? I would not. I'm telling you that right now. I would not. (laughs) You'd run. I would run because, you know, that's just not the life I want to live. And there's a lot of energy, right, in those places. Hers, really, I could feel it. It is sitting on a vortex. So at some point, it's almost the land more than the house that is attracting this energy in. And I can feel that in her situation. So she needs somebody who is very much a professional who has done this many times to be able to come in and and almost like, kink the hose on the vortex. Do you take emails or appointments through your website? Yes, through my website. What's the best way to get to you? It is through michelleclaire.net, um, and you can email me through there. You can schedule right there. And that's C-L-A-R-E. Yes, dot net. We've got that linked up for you at coasttocoastam.com. Since you've been doing this, how many years now? Professionally, seven years. As a, what has been the most satisfying thing you've done? For oh my you, gosh! For you, for you personally. <sighs> you know, I I can't actually just list one thing, but what I can tell you is the the countless emails I get on how people have changed their lives after reading, and the credit goes to them. But they've come out in maybe in deep grief and mourning and feeling disconnected from their loved one. And then when they are able to see that they are still connected, that their loved one's talking to them about what's going on in their life right now today, and you can see their their energy light up and shift, that is the most rewarding part of what I get to do, without a doubt. No regrets? Not one. What's been the scariest thing that's happened to you? Um, honestly, it was that little girl getting in my body because I was completely unprepared for that. Um, and I felt physically ill from it. So that was probably, and it wasn't scary in the sense that I didn't feel like I was going to die or not get my body back. I was just not prepared for that situation. Well, I bet you're ready for those things now, aren't you? Oh, you better believe it. (laughs) All right. We're going to take a short break and come back with final calls with Michelle Claire. Those of you on hold, just hang there. We'll do our best to get to all of you when we come back. Her website, as she mentioned, is hername.net. Linked up at coasttocoastam.com. Back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. And we're back with Michelle Clare, and we'll take your calls as well. Michelle, with your three near-death experiences, NDEs, did you learn something from each experience? Absolutely. Um, In the first one, I learned that angels were real. I had no doubt after I saw that. I knew my grandma knew, too, that I was coming. This goes back to what we started talking about in the beginning, how no one dies alone. My grandma was waiting right there when I had my near-death experience. I didn't have to look for her. She was holding my head in her lap. So our loved ones know. They have a psychic knowing about them. In my second near-death experience, I had a connection with Jesus, and Jesus came into the operating room and actually saved my life. And I learned in that one, Jesus is real. And not only is he real, he came in as my friend. He wasn't there saying, bow down to me, pray to me. No, he said, how can I help you? Was the energy behind him. And in my, and in my last near-death experience, that was when I encountered my life guides. And that wasn't even a word in my vocabulary at that point in time. And so what I really found out is we have this whole team of love and support guiding us each through this life. But there were many, many lessons for each near-death experience. Who sends you back to the 
physical plane. Do you do that on your own, or do they force you to come back? Yeah. Um, well, in in one of them, well, in one of them, I did not have a choice. It, they sent me back, and what it felt like was I just got put back in my body, and I felt so heavy. It felt like my arm weighed 500 pounds. So I felt the heavy and the denseness with that. And the other two, I actually could see my children during those, and I knew I made a conscious choice. I need to go back. And so I didn't feel, and this is important for people to know too, on a soul level, we do not need to feel the trauma of our, of our physical passing. I never felt any of the physical trauma I went through. I had, you know, that whatever the reason was that I passed it, each one happened. And then I came back in and I was like, oh, now I had the recovery period. But um, yeah, twice I chose to come back because I could see my kids and I knew I needed to stay longer. Back to the calls, Tim in Wisconsin, east of the Rockies. Hey, Timothy, go ahead, sir. Hey, George, Michelle, how you guys doing tonight? Okay, how about you? Good, good. Just keeping America going here with the newspaper tonight. All right, my friend, do it. And how can we help you? So, within the last 20 months, I had two brother-in-laws pass away, 140 and 127. Oh, my God. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, George, the fentanyl crisis is for real. It is. Mm. It is. And, uh, you know, it's destroyed our family because of it. So I just wanted to see, Michelle, if there's a way that you have anything from them that I could relay to uh, my wife and uh, her mother. Yeah. Um, were they both ruled um, accidental? Because I can guarantee you at least one of them is an accident. Yeah, we do think that the younger one mm -hmm. um, committed, committed suicide by it because the older one who was a 20-year uh, heroin addict, and he was in jail for a year, got out, and the first day he got out, he overdosed. Oh. That's what I feel. And so got, I, and I got the wanna... wrong stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the younger one drove him to the place, and he felt responsible and guilty, and we think that he committed suicide because of it. Oh, jeez. Okay, so I want to validate that for you because one feels like oops and one feels more intentional. Uh, um, now, having said that, I need to also say both of them are in an amazing heavenly realm now. So a lot of times people worry when a loved one transitions by suicide. Listen, they are still met with love and compassion just like everyone else, whether you died of a car accident or cancer or whatever. You are greeted with unconditional love and acceptance. So I need to make that very clear. The younger one really wants me to make that very clear because he says everyone's worried about me. Everyone's worried about me. You need to know they're together. You need to know that they're whole. They understand now. So there was, well, for both of them, what I want to say is they had lifelong addictions. So even if it didn't, if they weren't, I feel like they were, you know, playing with drugs at a young age or alcohol, but there were other addictions that would have shown up. So some of this is really genetically ingrained in them. Um, and then part of it was also, especially this younger one, he kind of likes the thrill. So I want to say that he kind of is a thrill seeker. Um, and that kind of, he says to me, gets him in trouble sometimes because he probably was searching for that at school too. And he might've been the kid who was the class clown. I need to say this about both of them. They're showing me a lot of feathers, a lot of feathers. So the family members should be seeing feathers in connection with them, but they will also want them to know that that represents their wings now because now they get to fly. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are so welcome. Please let the family know. Keep talking to them. They are they are whole, they are coherent, and they are still connected and in a relationship with everyone. And it's not uncommon sometimes when our loved ones transition that we can actually have a better relationship with them on the other side than we did on this side of the of the veil. Um, because they're not dealing with the human junk anymore. They're able to show up as the brightest, best version of them. Next up, we've got Dory in Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome to the program. Hi, Dory. Hey. Uh, I just want to tell you, George, you have the most wonderful interview questions. Wow, well, thank you. And, um, Michelle, uh, I, was, I know what heaven is like. I remember. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, pure, uh, unspeakable 
love? Yes. Down on your knees. Anyway, um, my mother and father died, and my cat, Peek, Peekaboo. Mm-hmm. So, do um, they have any messages? And tell Mom I'm sorry that the family was so greedy and things happened when she died. Okay, so your mom comes in and she says, stop right there, stop right there. She doesn't want you to carry that. When we transition out of our human form, we're able to see life from a 360-degree perspective. Your mom understands that people are playing human and doing some maybe not great things, but your mom needs to know that your mom wants you to know that she knows you did everything that you could. She actually shows me herself petting the cat too. She says she has three cats with her. So I don't know if your mom had cats or you had other cats that have transitioned too, but she gives me the number three in cats. Um, So I want to acknowledge that for you. And you know what I love about for you. You just said when you started this call, I remember. I remember the love of heaven. I remember what that felt like. And that is so beautiful because you know that your mom, your dad, your cats are getting to experience that every moment. And they have not left you for one second. um, Which one of them had heart issues? Because they're taking me to my heart. My peekaboo. My best 24-year-old. Anthony is 24, too. And then Baz and Sado. Mm-hmm. They all know. Okay. A whole bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I would love for you to do, and this is great for, for everyone, when we are missing our loved ones in spirit, if we set aside five minutes and we sit down on the couch and we say to them, please let me feel your love. Let me feel it inside of me. Surround me with it. We actually will feel it. And this is because we typically walk around sending out the signal, I love you, I miss you, where are you? And we forget that we also need to receive. And so while they are all holding this space of love around you, they're asking you to take a few minutes to sit down and just be a sponge and let them pour it all over you. Good luck, Dory. Thank you. Next up, Doc is with us in Petaluma, California on the wild card line. Hey, Doc, how you doing? Ain't that bad, George. Thank you for taking my call. Great. And how can we help you, sir? Well, I was hoping Michelle could uh, see maybe if I've got anything to look forward to in the next few years. All right. Simple reading. Yeah, I love that. And absolutely, yes, you do. Um, So, you know, here's the thing. I feel your angels coming in. They're wanting to guide this reading for you. So your angels are saying um, that they're ready for you to, they want to say like, chin up, look up, look up. So I don't know if you actually find yourself walking around, looking down on the ground, but they're asking you to look up, look up to the sky, look up to the stars. There's a lot coming in for you. They are telling me next year, you're not going to get... Um, like you're ready to take leaps next year's a jump, not a leap, but by the time you get to 2025, you will have leaped into a new energy. So with that, I do want to say next year, you're going to find some changes coming in. You might decide, Hey, I've lived here for 20 years. I'm ready to move down the street. You might decide, Hey, I'm ready to join the hiking club and meet some new people, but you're going to start making some steps next year. By the time you get to 2025, you're going to find yourself in a place that you feel very they give me the words complete, whole, comfortable, happy. All right. Very good. Very good. And don't be afraid. They want to tell you, don't be afraid to take the next step. Sometimes um, they're giving me the word, you know, we all have fear of rejection. And what if they don't like me? What if this new group's not a fit? Whatever this is, they're just encouraging you. Take the next step. It's going to lead you to where you want to go. Next up, we've got John in Toluca Lake, California. Welcome to the show. Go ahead, John. George, Michelle, my mom and I shared a great love. I wasn't there when she passed, but we shared a great love with animals. And maybe secondarily, I had my close friend die just a couple of weeks ago. I didn't know if he could come through already. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. So the first thing I want to start with, though, is your mom, because um, as soon as uh, George said, John, I felt mother energy come in. So please know that your mom is around you so strongly um, because I feel like she talks to you all the time. So you're going to feel it in your heart area. It feels like the way she's making me feel it is whispers to your heart almost. So it might be it feels like an emotion like, oh, Mom's happy. Mom would love me to do this. They're kind of when you find yourself saying those things, please know that that's a connection from your mom and she's cheering you forward. Um, 
she tells me, you do live life from the heart, so I need to acknowledge this is a big connection between the two of you, and that you're very outgoing, and she tells me that you look at people with eyes of compassion. So you are somebody who chooses to see the good in people, the good in the world, and really foster and grow that. And so your mom just wants me to clearly say she adores you. With your friend who is coming in, Um, Okay, you should be having some electrical signs because as I'm talking to you, I'm seeing the lights flicker in the room that I'm in. So you should be seeing lights flicker or a light bulb burning out. This is your friend connecting with you saying, I am fine. I'm here. I'm lighting your way. So also please know, I need to say this very clearly for you, that as you live your life, this dear friend gets to live life vicariously through you. And so one of the things that our loved ones often will say when they come in for a reading, is like, I don't want you to sit on the couch with the door shut for the next 20 years. I want you to get up and go live because as you experience that, I get to experience it too. This is very strongly a message for you from your friend right now. Living is for the living, isn't it? Absolutely. Next up, first-time caller Christy's with us in Downey, California. Hello, Christy. Welcome. Hi, George. Hey there. Thank you for taking my call. Sure thing. How can we help you? We only have a couple minutes left, so go for it. Okay, real quick, first-time caller. Um, I am just kind of realizing um, I'm empathic. I've been a sensitive person in my entire life. It goes a lot beyond that. But I'm calling regarding some night terrors I've had uh, since I was a little girl. Um, I'm now kind of just diving into the the whys um, of it. Is is that something that could be connected to being empathic? And I'm also open to if you do have any reading, general reading or anything for me. Yeah, absolutely. So, yes, the night terrors can be connected to being empathic. Um, and, and what I would say about this is, There might be someone around you that, whether this is at work or a neighbor or someone that is having a hard time, a challenging time, and you are unconsciously absorbing their stress, their trauma, their anxiety, and it's playing out in your dreams. So that very much can be connected to someone around you. And the next time you have one, your angels are telling me for you to ask, who is this related to? Because I do feel like a lot of it is not yours. And I want to be very clear about that. With your empathic ability, because it's actually, you might just be starting to notice it now or or recognize it. It is much deeper and much stronger than you're realizing. One of the things your angels are saying is ask us in, ask us in to guide you, direct you. Um, Because I feel like with you, it's almost like you feel everything. That's what I feel like. I feel like if I walk into the restaurant, I feel he's happy, she's sad, he's depressed, she's elated. I can feel everything in one room. And so for you, what you're going to want to start doing is kind of like what I was talking about earlier, this radio analogy. When you're going to go out into a public space, I want you to see yourself turning the volume down and just saying to your angels real clearly, please let me only feel what I need to feel in this place. Michelle, keep in touch with us and uh, enjoy the next couple days, okay? You too. Michelle Clare, website linked up at coasttocoastam.com. For Adam Thompson, Tom Danheiser, Dan Galanti, Lisa Lyon, Lux Lonehood, Sean Latasur, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burroughs, Tim Benal, Ryan Stacy, George Knapp, and Ian Pond.